Based in Vancouver, Canada, Julie Wang is an expert digital marketing strategist and owner of Tiny Planet Digital. With a focus on working with impact-driven and SDG-aligned businesses and organizations, Julie and her team at Tiny Planet Digital help establish, promote, and communicate an authoritative online presence for businesses, whilst being mindful of sustainability. Thank you everyone for joining me today. Um, I will be talking about creating productive employment for youth and how small businesses like mine can make a difference in the post-COVID economic transition period for the young leaders um, in your area. So I know Morris did a big introduction um, about me, but I'll also tell you a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Julie and I'm the owner and founder of Tiny Planet Digital and we are a boutique digital marketing agency based in Canada. And I started this business when I was just 23 years old. And I found that there was a really big gap between you know, more experienced entrepreneurs versus uh, people of a younger demographic and them seeking in-demand work and uh, developing those skills. And in my home city, I was uh, nominated and finalist uh, of the Women of the Year Business Award in the category of Emerging Leader. And I also work with various um, educational programs and charities to help youth develop skills, knowledge, and network um, in order to take on the future. So uh, these are you know, just some things I'm really passionate about. And more about me, I do wanna make a disclaimer that I am not like a scientific researcher in this area or field. Um, I'm not involved in government policy, but you know, why am I speaking to you today and why am I passionate about this topic? I'm a really big believer in the power of individual in driving impact and encouraging you know, a more thrivable future and running my own small business with the sustainable development goals in mind and understanding the difference you can make um, as a small business owner really sets my business and other businesses like mine apart and bringing that social good. So through today's presentation, I really wanna inspire other small business owners to consider working with youth and figuring out how to help them develop skills to further their careers to benefit not just your business, but also these young leaders as well. And like Morris mentioned, my company is Tiny Planet Digital. Um, we specialize in crafting digital marketing strategies. Um, we design, design implementation and execute plans to help achieve our clients' marketing goals. And as you mentioned, we primarily work with nonprofit organizations, sustainable tourism, hotels and hospitality, um, since COVID and our objective is obviously uh, to help our clients, but we have an emphasis on customization, education and sustainable growth. So yeah, thank you for your patience and learning more about myself and my company. So in the presentation today, we're covering uh, some key issues surrounding youth employment and how it relates to the sustainable development goal number eight, um, the best practices in supporting youth employment in your small business and some example case studies of how we can empower youth in the workplace. And finally, we'll just go over some key takeaways from today's presentation. Does that sound good? Perfect. So jumping into the sustainable development goal number eight, um, giving you a little bit more context about what that is uh, in relation to decent work and economic growth. The purpose of this goal that's set up is to promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment, and decent work for all. Of course, with every SDG, there are a lot of key indicators to make sure that the goals we set out are progressing. Um, as an example, you know, achieving full and productive employment and decent work for all women and men, including for young people and people with disabilities and equal pay of equal work with value, as well as sustainably reducing the portion of youth not in employment, education or training. But in, for the purpose of today's presentation, we're just focusing on ways to empower youth entrepreneurship and increase youth employment in the small business sector in particular. So I'm gonna start off, you know, me being based in Canada, I think it's different from a lot of people uh, in this webinar. So my context will be very Canadian focused, but hopefully you can relate to that as well. 
Earlier this year, the Employment Minister of Canada said that the pandemic has reinforced barriers for young people to enter the labor force, especially those with disabilities or racialized or indigenous people. And unfortunately, as a result of the pandemic, unemployment rates for young Canadians increased by about 6% from 2019 to 2020. That's roughly a two times increase um, compared to uh, workers of an older demographic. So just something to think about there. But the next thing is that actually 97.9% .9 of Canadian businesses are small businesses. And small businesses here are defined as businesses with one to 99 paid employees. So I would like to invite everyone here to consider how can you as a small business member or you know, part of the small business community make a difference and contribute to the progression of this particular goal of employing more young people and uh, in a more inclusive and equitable way. So I really believe that having our small business community step up in contributing and helping young workers, then we're able to promote the sustained, inclusive and sustainable economy economic growth here, you know, considering, you know, the percentage of small businesses within the whole economy, right? So um, a lot of small business owners tend to have hesitancy or, you know, reluctance in hiring um, young people coming out of high school, secondary school, or young people coming out of colleges or universities. Um, often because they feel like these students or young workers are very ill prepared for the actual workplace. So the solution here is for the business community has to be, you know, more work integrated learning, which puts an emphasis on um, the creation and implemented implementation of curriculums um, that not only satisfies the students needs, but also the employers needs. Academic knowledge is really only part of the equation within hiring. In fact, most employers actually rate that at the dead bottom in terms of what they look for when they hire young people. Far behind soft skills such as motivation, having a good attitude, communication, professionalism, etc. So how would we kind of contribute to these work integrated learning programs to get students on the job experiences as part of the education? And how can we you know, participate more in that? I'll be talking about that a little bit later. And um, one big problem is that small business participating in work integrated learning programs, such as cooperative programs, student work learn, or kind of internship programs tend to be an exception rather than the norm. Um, because large universities and colleges push students towards public sector, public sector work or big business uh, corporation placements. Um, but considering how many small business there are, there's really a lot of opportunity there for students. And education institutions need to do more to engage with small business community, especially you know, where there's a lot of labor shortages and where young workers can have a lot of opportunities for growth. Um, so yeah, in this report here in the chart, you'll see that the top barriers for hiring uh, young workers is motivation and attitude, um, as well as minimum wage increases. So these are kind of issues that people are hesitant about. Aside from these two issues, some common key issues that, um, you know, small business uh, avoid hiring young workers is due to a lack of systems and training infrastructure um, in order to lead the or onboard the relatively inexperienced young workers, or uh, the businesses might be unaware of resources and programs available to them to support uh, training, hiring, and uh, retaining these workers. So in our next section in the best practices, we'll highlight you know, the best ways to combat uh, these issues and how your small business can engage uh, with these young workers. Perfect. So we'll be touching on uh, mitigating the concerns of hiring, such as how do you scan for motivation and attitude? How do you uh, address the lack of systems and training infrastructure to onboard these inexperienced hires? 
And how do you combat minimum wage increases, inflation, and being generally unfamiliar with resources to support this hiring program? So before we jump into the best practices for small business owners, uh, I would like to spend a little bit more time to help people understand what the young workers today are looking for. Uh, typically, uh, younger workers, say from 18 to 30, nowadays are deeply invested in their work and you know, want to know that their time and effort have real meaning. For instance, only six in 10 uh, young workers agree that they know what's expected of them at work, according to a workforce study. So, you know, number one here, knowing what is expected of me at work is extremely important to young workers. Um, also, only four out of 10 surveyed respondents feel like their job is important or they feel like that a manager or supervisor cares about them. Um, so, and just three out of 10 people say that they have someone at work who encourages their development. So these are all really important points that young workers are expecting. And we'll talk about how your organization can provide that for them. Uh, so number one, that is knowing what worker is expected of at work, the mission and purpose of the company and making them feel like their job is very important and uh, a manager or supervisor that cares about them and having the opportunity to you know, excel at something. And lastly, someone at work who encourages their development. So if you have this kind of structure in place, you'll have a really good engagement and experience with these workers. So I start with an exercise in working with uh, my young workers and uh, small businesses that I speak to and I try to help them out with um, hiring uh, young workers is defining the boundaries. And it comes with three steps. The first being identifying what the exchange is. Number two, designating training and resources. And number three, uh, identifying the terms of empowerment for these workers. So when onboarding young workers, clearly define not only the boundaries of their roles, but what the exchange is. You're not saying, hey, summer intern, you're here to you know, uh, update the website, check the email, call the supplier, or things like that. Um, you have to say, you have to reframe the role in an exchange way saying that your company is offering mentorship and career development in exchange for, for example, new energy and perspective, a fair compensation that is perhaps, perhaps uh, you know, lower than an experience higher. If you mark the exchange of the program extremely clear to your hires, um, it gives them a sense of, you know, understanding the expectations and having someone care about what they do. Most young workers are eager to learn and build their experience. Um, so this enthusiasm, you know, is really good for exchanging for that mentorship. And the next step would be having to designate training and resources toward the young workers. And um, as a recommendation, mentorship needs to be structured. Um, there should be regular catch up a database of learning materials and a clear plan to capitalize on this program. And um, this could be anything like weekly check-ins, networking, and even opportunities to meet other people within the company or uh, reaching out to people in their network to speak to. These are invaluable to young workers who are getting started um, in their careers and uh, they will be able to practice their newly learned skills as well. So. Like I mentioned in the earlier slide, the mission, values, and vision of your organization then becomes really important to these workers. So they want to feel empowered at their jobs. And one of the best way is through, you know, development of their new skills, but also giving them the autonomy to practice these skills. So usually we encourage our workers to have the responsibility that they're solely responsible for, but we give them a designated amount of time to work on uh, autonomous projects to help them practice uh, their skills. Um, so they're more likely to stick with your company longer 
uh, because of the willingness to develop them and have them work on their own projects to identify their strength and develop their career. So as I mentioned, primarily this is of a Canadian context, but I am sure um, in many countries, including Australia, which I believe most attendees are from today, do have these specific programs to help you hire young leaders uh, in your organization and workplace. Um, as an example, we have Venture for Canada. They have three different programs for different types of businesses, different type of students or graduates uh, or recent graduates um, to participate in. And they cover young workers' wages up to 70%. And they prioritize hi hiring marginal groups, um, such as people with disabilities, Indigenous people, et cetera. And there's Tech Nation, which is of a similar nature, helping people develop in-demand skills. Uh, Innovate BC also provides uh, these programs to help your workers upskill and provides a, a large sum of wage subsidies as well. And obviously there is the United Nations funded Canadian Youth Break Barriers to Employment Program uh, that offer 50 to 70% of wage subsidies, as well as Eco Canada, which focuses on impact driven research, sustainability uh, focused green jobs within Canada and they heavily fund research and development programs um, for recent grads and graduate students for your organization. And there's another one called MyTax and there's um, also Canada Summer Jobs. So I'm just kind of listing out a lot of these resources. So feel free to ask me you know, more questions about how all these programs work as we're familiar with most of them. And we really do utilize this and recommend this for a lot of people in our network. Um, just to name a few. And these are really, really strong support programs guided by government policy that help small businesses like mine and like yours um, also help out these young workers. Perfect. So moving into our case study st segment, I just wanted to share an example of success from my company over the last year in participating in these youth employment programs and doing our part in supporting um, youth employment and empowerment in the workplace. Um, in the last year, by leveraging these youth in employment incentives and initiatives, um, I hired three employees under the age of 22 and seven interns under the age of 22. And we had really positive uh, reviews uh, from them. And we were able to provide upskilling bonuses to support skills development, to reduce turnover. We have weekly catch-in uh, catch-ups and I'll go over a little bit, you know, how we provided structure for them. So usually, uh, we to provide structure for our uh, workers, young workers, we design their roles with an outcome in mind. You know, you are starting here. Where do you want to end up? Um, we also maintain, evaluate and improve on a consistent basis. We do performance reviews uh, every three months to help them check in and keep on track. We also facilitate reflection by uh, weekly reports, which I'll talk about uh, soon. And we also integrate theory and practice. So we encourage them to you know, find what they want to learn about and put them on projects that can give them the hands-on experience that they need. So uh, starting with design outcome in mind, we are very um, kind of clear with our placement key performance indicators, what is expected of them. And we also create a career progression plan for them, which is a roadmap of responsibilities and why it's important to the organization and how they will move from point A to point B and look out for the future for them. And to facilitate reflection, we uh, help our employees do weekly reports. It's a diary that helps the employees skills development by keeping track of their progressions within the company. So every week they note down what they've learned, how they can improve, how they feel, what their stress levels are like and what they hope to achieve next week. And, you know, I don't go in and read that every week, but it's a really exciting and, you know, fulfilling and 
uh, enrichment activity for these young workers to see how far they've come, you know, within a three month period, a six month period, a one year period. And with performance reviews, it's really important uh, with these younger workers as opposed to more experienced older workers because they love it when you provide feedback and guidance on their performance because they're a clean slate. They need help understanding if they're on the right track. So if you're able to provide that and keep pulse, that's a really great thing um, as well. And any opportunity to provide upskill learning, workshops and team building activities, I find that's bringing a really positive uh, morale to the team as well. So as a result of you know, hiring uh, these young workers, our company was able to double our revenue from the previous year. And we have an extremely high employee retention rate. So I hope we're doing something right. And we've also created a talent pipeline and a reputation uh, that is really strong in supporting youth employment in the space that we're now known for. As an example, we now have references and students uh, writing to us about their experiences with us. Um, so more students will come down with us. Uh, with regards to key takeaways, so hopefully uh, in my presentation, I wanted everybody to understand that as a small business owner, you know, anywhere you are, you can make a difference and contribute to, you know, a more uh, sustainable uh, economic environment, uh, especially in SDG 8. And, you know, to help you alleviate, alleviate a lot of small business concerns um, and hesitations in hiring young workers through my own experience, what I see is really, really important is to, number one, provide structure and set up boundaries and expectations for your young workers. And number two, create mentorship and professional development opportunities for them. And number three, empower these young workers by providing autonomy and space for new ideas that will assist them in contributing to your company's mission and vision, helping them feel what they're doing is an, an important contribution to the organization. Um, and lastly, besides these three points that you can implement within your business, by supporting government policies that focus on youth employment, skills development, and youth entrepreneurship, um, you can really make a difference in your country or region with regards to, you know, getting more youth into the workforce, um, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic impact. And thank you so much. Um, it's a pleasure to uh, talk to you all. And yeah, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them.